بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Tonight is 23rd of Safar 1441, and we are continuing with the story of Yusuf alayhi salam under the sub chapter of um, Yusuf alayhi salam's brother, um, Binyamin Mitzi. The verses from the verse of Surah Al Yusuf 69 to 72. 69. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم والرجيم همزه ونفره ونفره ولما دخلوا على يوسف آوى إليه أخاه قال إني أنا أخوك فلا تبتأس بما كانوا يعملون Translation of the meaning in English And when they entered before Yusuf He received his brother to stay with him and told him I am your brother So do not despair over what they have done It's not really loud. Uh, we said that last time. So I'm not moving. Bismillah. Bismillah. Still there. It's not really Bismillah. 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 If you're okay, happy with it, I can still You fix it later on, sure. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فلما جهزهم بجهازهم جعل السقاية في رحل أخيه ثم أذن مؤذن أيتها العير إنكم لسارقون. So when he had provided them with their provisions, he put the golden bowl placed into his brother's bag. Then a herald called out after them, O oh, caravan, you are thieves. Indeed. You just go down Interpretation and then <clears throat> here in the Quran, and as on page 278, here the Quran depicts for us the scene when Yusuf alayhi brothers came to him again with his brother Binyamin. Yusuf took his brother aside from others and told him that he was his brother Yusuf. However, he said to him that he should not reveal this secret to the other brothers at this stage. He comforted him for their brother's mistreatment of him. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa sayyati a'amalina man yahdihi allahu fala mumilla lah wa man yudhil fala hadi lah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Amma ba'd. فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. We are coming now to the closing chapters of the story of Yusuf عليه السلام and we have spoken already how Allah سبحانه وتعالى had honoured Yusuf عليه السلام by bringing him out from the prison and making him to be the minister of the budget in the dominion or the, in the state of Egypt. And now, basically, Yusuf السلام, is in control of all the food that is, supports the areas around Egypt. And his brothers now, they came to him at the first time, this is the fir first time, and then they came to him, this is the second time. So this is the second meeting between the brothers of Yusuf and Yusuf Alisa. The first time they came without their little brother. Remember they were 12, Yusuf is gone, they're 11. The other brother of Yusuf is from the father and the mother. And the rest are only from the father, a different mother. <coughs> so, first time he had honored them and then he said, he asked a number of issues regarding their family and then they said about their brother. So he said, okay, next time you come, I'll bring you an extra load of camel if you bring your little brother. And if you don't bring him, I'm not going to give you anything. So they had to bring him, and they had, if you remember, to bargain with their father because father they did not trust them uh, because what they've done with Yusuf alayhi salam. So after they have said to him that we will be in disaster if you don't give us your son, which is our little brother, because we're not going to get any <coughs> any food, and they have given him. The word, the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Then he told them to come to Egypt, this is for the second time, and to enter from different gates, from different spots, in order to keep away the evil eye. <coughs> now they've entered, and they brought with them the little brother. As soon as they brought the little brother, Yusuf alayhi salam, awa ilayhi He took him aside. Now we don't know how he talked to him and how, how uh, it was not really detailed here. Only we could go to the people of the book, but uh, as I said, we don't need to know about this issue. But basically he had told him that I'm your brother and he comforted him and he said to him, uh, keep a close eye regarding what they've done to you and what they've done to me before as well. So he had told him and told him as well to keep that as a secret. And also he planned with him something that would later on end up with him being with the with the Yusuf alayhi salam and not returning back. And that is? Afterwards, Yusuf alayhi salam devised a plan to stop Benjamin from going back with his brothers and to stay with him in Egypt. He asked his servants to hide his drinking cup in the sack of Benjamin. When the brothers left, Yusuf alayhi salam... Uh, now, he asked his workers uh, to do that, that's also in question. It could be just Yusuf and his, uh, his brother reported that. Nobody knew about this plan except for Yusuf and, and that would be more uh, of understanding for later on. Because then if the uh, caller is going to call that you are thieves and they know that they are not thieves, it will be a mushkir, they will be lying. They will be saying something which is not true. So. Um, the, uh, the, the, the Quran doesn't say that he had commanded his uh, youth or his workers to go and put the suwa' the siqaya, which is the thing that the king drinks with and, and also the, what he measures the people, the food with it. So he had commanded for that and it's a very, you know, maybe it's made of gold, something which is really uh, 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 very precious. So he, he himself and his brother put it together, nobody else. And that, as I said, that's more fitting for the story because when he commanded his, uh, his workers to do something, that was mentioned in the Quran. It was, He said before, and he said to his workers, do put their item that they brought to us in order to buy their things with it in their stuff, put it back. So that when they, when they go back, they will know that they will, they will have as well more opportunity to come back to purchase. So all of that it, it indicates that when the Quran, uh, which is something important, when the Quran did not mention this, we cannot say that he commanded his soldiers to do so. So it is actually a plan devised between him and his brother, nobody else. So, now, go on. <coughs> When the brothers left, Yusuf sent his people telling them that the king's drinking cup was missing. And okay. they... Now, we're going to read some verses. Translate <laughs> Um, when he prepared them. So when he had pro uh, provided uh, them with the provisions, he put the golden bowl placed into his brother's back. So he, Yusuf al -Salam. Now. Then a herald called out after them, O caravan, you are thieves indeed. A herald? What is that? A caller. A caller he called. Yes. And they turned back and said, what is it that you are missing? Who is they? The, no, the brothers. The brothers of Yusuf. They went back. So what, what you are missing? And they said, we are missing the king's drinking bowl. Whoever uh, restores it shall be awarded a camel load and I am bound by it. The brother said, By Allah, you know well that we came not to make mischief in the land, and we are not thieves. <coughs> they said, 
When, uh, who is they now? The soldiers. Soldiers. They said, what then shall be the penalty of the thief if you are provided, uh, sorry, proved liars? قالوا جزاؤه من وجد في رحله فهو جزاؤه كذلك نجد الظالمين. They said the penalty should be that he is he he in whose bag it is found should be held as a bondsman uh, to atone as a for bonus. Bonus. Bonds bondsman. Bonds what? Bonds. Will be will be tied. Bondsman. Maybe yeah. Maybe like a, a slave. <coughs> yeah, a slave now. To atone for the crime. I would like to prepare these words next time so we can know the meaning of it. So, فبدأ في أوعية أوعيتهم قبل وعاء أخيه ثم استخرجها من وعاء أخيه كذلك كدنا يوسف ما كان يأخذ أخاه في دين الملك إلا أي شاء الله نرفع درجات من النشاء وفوق كل ذي علم علي. Thus we punish the wrongdoers. Thus do we punish the wrongdoers. So he began searching, searching in their bags before the bag of his brother. Then at last he brought it out from his brother's bag. Thus did we plan for Yusuf. We could not take his brother according to the king's law. He could not take his brother according to the king's law unless Allah had willed it. We raise whosoever we please in ranks and overall endued with knowledge is the one, the all-knowing. It just goes into a interpretation of it. <coughs> so when the brothers left, Yusuf sent his people telling them that the king's drinking cup was missing and they were suspected of stealing it. He also made a prize of one camel load of food for whoever brings it back. The brothers were taken by surprise and said to the accuser that they did not come here to I do mischief or wrongs. Okay, so just uh, making sure that you understand here. First of all, that it is not Yusuf who is the one who called. I'm mad at I can't Because Yusuf, you know, they're not thieves. So he's not the one who called. You are thieves. It is not Yusuf who had called. Because Yusuf, you know that they are not what? Thieves. He will not say, so. he will not say something which is not true. The ones who had called are the ones who do not know. And he did not just point to them, he pointed to the ear, everybody. The ones who had taken food from the king, including the Yusuf's brother. So that's a point that you need to, to, to make sure that you understand it. Right. So now they come back, go on. By Allah, you know well that we came not to make mischief in the land and we are not thieves. Okay, they came back to him, to them, and he said, uh, and maybe you don't mean us that we are thieves. So what are you missing? So they said, we are missing the what? The drinking pot, the one that we use to as well give the weight with it for the food. So now they said to them, Tallahi, by Allah, you know very well we did not come here to cause what mischief in the land. How did they, you know? Anybody got to tell me? You knew already that we did not come here to, to steal. How can they use that? Yes, Father. They came last year. They came last year and? Because they came last year, they could be thieves twice. <laughs> so what, what is that they said to them? that You know that we, we came not for stealing. Doing, what? Huh? Have we doing business before? Doing business. Because we've been doing business and been stealing all the way. Huh? Ah, that's the one. When they brought back the stuff that was being put into it, you remember Yusuf uh, when he gave them the food and they gave the equivalent of that food and then Yusuf put that equivalent for them back without them knowing. When they got back, they opened their items and they said to their father, Look, this is our stuff, the one that we want to give to the king, is already giving back to us. So we got the food plus what we're supposed to pay for it. So we got it already. So they brought it back to Yusuf. So that to show them that uh, you know that if we were thieves, we would have 
hidden the fact that you've given us back the money. You know, you know that we did not come. If we were thieves, we would have hidden from you the, the, the knowledge that we got our items back. But we got it for you. So they, they, they brought it back, the same thing that they want to purchase, or they were purchasing with it last year, the same thing here this year as well. You remember we had seven years of drought. The first year they came, this is the second year now. There will be a third year now, later on. Third, three, three meetings between the brothers of Yusuf and, uh, and Yusuf a.s. Right. So, لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا جِئْنَا لِمْسِرْ وَمَا كُنَّا سَعِبْ We're not thieves. We're not thieves. طيب. قَالُوا فَمَا جَزَاؤُهُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ كَلِمْ Now. And you are well aware of the fact that we are welcome here in honor and we never came with any bad intention. Now. So those who came accusing them asked, what then shall be the penalty of the thief if you are proved liars? They said the penalty should be that he is in whose bag it is found should be held as a bondsman to atone for the crime. Thus do we punish the wrongdoers. This was the rule in their sharia that if someone stole something from someone, the punishment to be inflicted upon the thief uh, was that he should be enslaved by the one from whom he had stolen. So, they said, okay, if you are saying the truth that they didn't steal anything, so who is, who is being found in his item that he stole the thing? What is going to be his punishment? They said, well, his punishment that he will be taken as a slave, as a bondsman, they said, as a slave. Because this is in the Sharia of whom? Of Yaqub. Sharia of Yaqub, alayhi salam. This is the Sharia of Yaqub. This is the Sharia of their father. So that is, the person who steals, he will be stolen. And this is how we recompense Allah in me. Then Allah says, فَبَدَأَ بِأَوْعِيَتِهِمْ قَبْلَ وِعَاءِ أَخِرٍ Now. So they started searching in each sack for the cup. And so he, Yusuf, began searching in their bags before the bag of his brother. Then at last he brought it out from his brother's bag. They did so only because in uh, this way he may dispel any suspicion that it might have been planned beforehand to frame them. And then Allah said, translation of the meaning, thus we planned. Thus we uh, did plan for Yusuf. He could not take his brother according to the king's law. Right. Allah's plan. Allah plans can be seen here in these verses in four things that happens. Number one, that is, Yusuf making a plan with his brother secretly. So, he's telling his brother, I'm going to put that <coughs> into your items, and this is what happens. This is the first plan, you can see. Second plan is that when the caller had announced that there is a missing of the Sikaya of the king, uh, they said, well, they did not come, you know, uh, we did not take it. They said, the one who brings it, he will have another extra load to show that this is something, not just a simple thing. And the, and the punishment of it is not something simple as well. So the second plot here, or plan of Allah, is that the, basically, the Yusuf salam showed them that this is not something easy to be missed and also is punishable very severely. Third thing is that SubhanAllah Allah Azza wa willed for them to speak out the punishment. Because in the Sharia, in the laws of the king of Egypt, if any person steals, he'll be maybe imprisoned, will be whipped, a few months and they'll be coming out. And then Yusuf will not be able to take his brother. So he let them, subhanAllah, he made them to speak out the one, the punishment. He said, okay, the one who, we will, the one, because they're confident. The one who steals, he should be stolen, taken away. So they have, the, they have, got, they have ruled themselves by themselves and by the sharia of Yaqub alayhi salam. The person who steals is, will be slid away as a bondsman or as a slave. will be taken. So that's another from the plans of Allah. The fourth one, when Yusuf alayhi salam started, with his, with their items. If he started with his items, that would be very, very suspicious. Why did he start with them? 
So he said that the first one, oh, he's innocent. The second one, he's innocent. Then, oh, mashallah, nothing in there, nothing in there. So now he finished ten brothers, nothing there. And the last one he left, because the youngest. There, and it was there. It was found there. They were shocked. Found it there. He's not shocked, he knows. And, uh, you know, so he was shocked. So shocked. Now, Quran does not talk about how he was shocked and how his brother pretended that, you know, he's, he's a thief, for example, and he was... The Quran does not talk about that issue. But it talks about the most important thing is a plan. It's a plan. كَذَلِكَ كِدْنَا لِيُوسُفِ مَا كَانَ لِيَأْخُذَ أَخَاهُ فِي دِينِ الْمَلْكِ إِلَّا عِيَشَاءَ اللَّهِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءَ وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَيْنٍ and he says, go on, so had it been for their confession? Just so they started the searching in each sack for that cup, and so Yusuf began searching in their bags. <clears throat> Before the bag of his brother, then at last he brought it out from his brother's bag. He did so only <coughs> because... <coughs> because he may dispel any suspicion, and then Allah said, thus we plan for Yusuf. Um, had they not said that the person who had stolen would be taken by the one from whose, who he stole, Yusuf Islam would not have been able to take Binyamin from them under the king's law. However, Allah willed for him otherwise, and so he said, unless Allah had willed. Now, Father, go on. We raise whoever, whosoever we please in ranks, that is in knowledge and wisdom. So when you raise him in knowledge, <coughs> and over all endued uh, with knowledge is the one, the all knowing. Which means? Allah. Which means after that? Uh, that y Yusuf, then there's interpretation. Yusuf, yeah. Continue just from when you finish, please. Yusuf was obviously endued with extraordinary wisdom and discretion and he had foresight and insight. What he did was from Allah because it was a prelude for his father, brothers and his people <coughs> to come and live in Egypt. However, when they saw by their own eyes that the cup was hidden in the sack of Binyamin, they said, قَالُوا إِيَّسْرِقْ Now, this is another verse. قَالُوا إِيَّسْرِقْ فَقَدَ السَّرَقَ أَخُ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَأَسَرَّهَا يُوسُفُ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَلَمْ يُمِدِهَا لَهُمْ قَالَ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَالَ أَنْتُمْ شَرٌ مَكَانَ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا تَصِفُونَ نعم. They said, if he steals, his brother did steal before. But Yusuf kept it secret in his heart and did not disclose it to them. He thought, uh, you are in more evil state and Allah is all aware of you, what you ascribe. Repetition please. <coughs> However, when they saw by their own eyes that the cup was hidden in the sack of Binyamin, they said, if he steals, his brother did steal before. And they meant Yusuf by saying that. And it is said that here by... It was said, okay, that's the people of the book, they said. Uh, that the Yusuf stole the idols of his <coughs> maternal grandfather and brother. The father of his mother, he had an idol, so he stole it when he was a, a kid. That's that is being said, and he had he had uh, broken it, okay, and it was said as well. And also suggested that Yusuf used to steal the food from his house and feed it to the poor. And Ngomar, his aunt, nothing there? Uh, no. no. To steal the food from his mother, uh, the weakest, but the other one as well, that she, or he was with his uh, maternal, uh, sort of paternal aunt, <coughs> and she loved for him to stay with him, with her. He was a good boy, so his father, Yaqub, wanted to bring him and uh, she didn't want him to go, so she's, she, what she did, she put her waist belt inside the clothes, inside the clothes of Yusuf when he was a little boy. I mean, she wrapped it with him inside his clothes. <coughs> so when his father took him, she said, I'm missing my waist belt. So he said, well, I think uh, maybe your son has told it. He said, son, my son does not steal. He said, well, let's search him. So they searched him, they took his clothes off, and he was wrapped on his belly. 
So she kept him with her until she died and then his father took him. That's another story we mentioned. Allahu A'lam. The correct story, which has not been said, has it been said yet? The correct story that it's a lie. <coughs> Why should we go to this interpretation? Basically, they've lied. They say to the, to the Yusuf, they said, if he's to steal, then another brother of his before him is stolen. That means because these two brothers, they are from different mothers, they are, they are really affected by their maternal family. Huh? You know something? The mother alone. <laughs> the mother alone side. It's not our mother, our mother is good. SubhanAllah. The scholar he said, the envy sticks to the heart for a long time. This is the envy of the brothers of Yusuf to Yusuf and his brother. That envy led them to again produce a lie. So the correct opinion, as Ibn Jarir, rahimahullah, he said, that is, it's a lie. Just made a lie. They made a lie about Yusuf, alayhi salam. He said, in, if he's to steal another brother before him, he stole. Subhanallah. So, now Yusuf alayhi salam قال فأسرها يوسف في نفسه نعم But Yusuf alayhi salam kept it secret in his heart and did not disclose it to them and what he did in his heart was No, what he said is So what he did not disclose now he's just going to be saying these words and that is أنتم شر مكانا والله أعلم بما تصفه You are in a more evil state and Allah is well aware of what you ascribe أنتم شر مكانا هي it does not mean that there's a comparison that the Yusuf he wasn't evil and they are more evil. Do you understand me? Because it hints like he's more evil and his Yusuf he was evil. No. أنتم شر مكانا شر مكانا as in more evil than what you have described Yusuf as in. Not as in Yusuf himself was. Do you understand me? You are more evil of your lying description of Yusuf. Because you told that he said it, he claimed that he's a thief. والله أعلم بما تصفون and Allah knows Allah knows what you are describing which is not correct and it's not true yet you are sympathizing and tolerant with all of that I mean I'm just putting myself in the shoes of Yusuf alayhi salam what will we do I'll beat them up after all of that what you've done to me you threw me in the well and after you got rid of me and you lied to my father and after and after you still lie against me because he's listening to them like you know, he's, he's holding himself. You know, you know, if he stole that his other brother before he stole as well. Subhanallah. I mean, how can he hold you there? And he's got the power now to beat them up. He's got the power. He just put a finger, paint a finger like this, huh? Like that. You know, the like this, killing them. He's up, living, like this, death. Could have just said that. Subhanallah. It's just this tolerance, it's, 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 it's patience, patience, because he knows Allah is the best of the planets, and he knows from the dream he saw from the beginning, which is he had kept away from his brothers, whom his father told him, don't convey to your brothers. You remember the 11 planets and the moon and the sun, and gonna be, this is going to be fulfilled, so this is a plan, so he's not hastening, huh? the food has to be cooked on a very slow heat. Slow heat and very slow. Wallah. We're talking about, you know, years. A lot of years here. And they said, we're going to see that. They said that uh, when Yusuf السلام, was seduced by the wife of Al Aziz, he was 17 years old. And then he was thrown in the prison seven years. And then there was seven years, which is lots of rain. Then the other the seven years, which was the drought. <coughs> so they came in the third, second, and the third year. First and the second and third year. So you've got about more than 30 years you're talking about, away from his father. More than 30. It's more than 30 away from his father. Fine. Continue his interpretation. He could not uh, say it openly at that time and kept quiet because he wanted to show courtesy, mercy and forgiveness. Now they started begging for his clemency and consideration and said, <coughs> يا أيها العزيز إن له أبا شيخا كبيرا فخذ أحدنا مكانا إنا نراك من المحسنين قال معاذ الله 
أن نأخذ إلا من وجدنا متاعنا عنده إنا إذا لظالمون نعم أو ميستا He has a father who is very old and vulnerable man So take one of us in his place Surely we see you uh, are a righteous man And he said Allah forbid that we take other than him with whom we found the property Now we are just a thief Or should we take somebody else as a ransom? We don't do that. Now, if we did that, we should be unjust. Meaning, we do not take the innocent in custody and release the guilty. This we do not allow in our codes of law. Now, we will not tolerate for it to happen. Now, by the way, the people of the book here, they say that the Yusuf السلام, he had shown himself or exposed himself to them, and that's wrong. At this moment, the Yusuf, he said, I am Yusuf, which is wrong. Right, then we go to the following verses. فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّ فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّ Yes? Translation of the meaning, when they despaired of convincing him, they conferred privately together. قَالَ كَبِيرُهُمْ أَلَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ أَبَاكُمْ قَدْ أَخَذَ عَلَيْكُمْ مَوْفِقًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنْ قَبْلِ مَا فَرَّطْتُمْ فِي يُوسُفِ فَلَمْ أَبْرَحَ الْأَرْضَ حَتَّى يَأْذَنَ لِي أَبِي أو يحكم الله لي وهو خير الحكيم. The elders said, "Don't you know that your father has taken a firm pledge from you in Allah's name, and before that you failed him regarding Yusuf? I will not depart from this land until my father permits me or Allah commands me, and we uh, and he is the best to command." Can I just ask you now, please, to go to the interpretation? I'm sorry, you've been back and forth. The Quran tells us now the following story after they became desperate to take, uh, desperate of taking bin Yamin from Yusuf salam. They went aside to confer about the matter privately and what should be their next step. Okay. <clears throat> the elder's brother... فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّةِ Najiyah means privately. One of the Arab, when he heard these verses, he said, these verses cannot come except from God. Because of the eloquence in it. فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّةِ This word خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّةِ had summed up maybe two hours, three hours talk. Do you understand that? <laughs> Just summed up so many talk that happened. You know what happened? What we shouldn't brought the Yusuf and we should brought the brother. We should have, you know, we should have actually checked our items before these people find out that it was our brother and all of them. Just that way. So the Arabi, who knows the eloquence of speech, this is coming from God, coming. Khalasu Najiyya. Two words, some dark conversation of three or four hours. Can't come except from a God. Khalasu Najiyya. Now, now the older one, they call him Robin. I don't know, this is the people book Robin or whatever his name is. You know, he's the eldest one. He's the most, you could say, sensible person. And he thinks that what we're doing is not, is, is wrong, is wrong. The one who said yeah, it, it could be, it could be the one, because we said, you remember, we said he's the best one, it could be the elder one, one of them, he was more sympathizing, he said, don't kill him, just, you know, throw him in the will, could be him, no. So the eldest of the brothers said, don't you know that your father has taken a firm pledge from you in Allah's name, you must bring him back to him unless you are rendered helpless, now we are unable to fulfill his pledge, this pledge, and we... <clears throat> failed here as we failed in the case of Yusuf. I do not have any courage to face my father. I shall remain here and will not depart from this land until my father permits me to come back home or Allah commands me by making me able to take my brother to my father and he is the best to command. Right. Now he's giving them some advice. ila abikum. Faqulu ya abana إن ابنك سرق وما شهدنا إلا بما علمنا وما كنا للغيب حافظين واسأل القرية التي كنا فيها والعير التي أقبلنا فيها وإنا لصادق فضل Return back to your father and say Our father, your son has committed theft and we only bear witness to what we know We could not guard against the unseen and ask the town where we have been and the caravan in which we have ret we returned and we are surely telling the truth. 
Translation. Interpretation. Interpretation. <coughs> he asked him to go back and said, Return to your father and say, Our father, your son, committed theft. Tell him what has happened and why it, were, it has happened and that we are telling what we have seen. We only bear witness to what we know and we could not guard against the unseen and ask the town where we have been and the caravan we have, uh, which we return and we are surely telling the truth. What we have told is a well-known story in Egypt and you could ask them. Or you could ask the caravan in which we travel there. We are absolutely truthful. Basically the story of <coughs> the king's Sikai was stolen and was found is a world break news at that time. Lots of people knew about it. So that's why he's saying, the elder brother to them, go to them and uh, to your father and tell him. You know, you could just ask to verify our story. It's well known that it was found in the youngest brother and all this. It's a world news. Okay? Everybody knows about the story. That we are truthful. But does not remind you this. With the verses at the beginning when they threw uh, uh, Yusuf السلام, in the well and they said to him, وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُؤْمِنٍ لَنَا وَلَوْ كُنَّا صَادِقِينَ Compare them. That you're gonna, not going to believe our story that the wolf had captured him, we left him with our items, and even if you should be truthful, you will not believe us. Now this one he says here, we are truthful. Before he said, even if you are to be truthful, you're not going to believe us. So even if we are truthful, they're going to be able. Did he believe them here? In this second one, did he believe them? In the first one, did he believe them? Second one, no. So they were right. Even if you are, if we are truthful, you're not going to believe us. As I said at the beginning, and they are truthful now, but Yaqub is not going to believe them. He says. قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ so just, just go to the interpretation. قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرَا فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ عَسَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا نعم فضل. However, it was not for Yaqub to believe them so easily. He knew them well and he had heard such a story from them once before. He said, no, but your own selves have tempted you in some way but patience is better. It is not of his nature or character to steal. Of whose nature? The being the little boy. The youngest brother. It's not from his nature to steal. You tell him that he stole. I know that he's not a thief. He brought him up. Now. And it is once more a fabricated excuse, and so the only way is to be patient. Then Yaqub said, Maybe Allah will bring them back to me. Okay, that's it. Now, here he says here, when he said, بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا I think you're planning, you're plotting something else. That tells us two things. Number one, Yaqub doesn't know the ghaib. If he knew the ghaib, he would have known that they are truthful. Number two, this is the effect of being a criminal. When you steal once, people will start to you stealing. Even if you should repent from stealing and the some burglary had happened and you were next to it, the first suspect would be what? You. If you lie once, even if you repent, the person will say to you, Are you sure you say it's true? This is the Shukman Masi, we say, the bad effect of the Masi. In England, they say the first impression is the what? Last impression, isn't it? First impression, last impression. Khalas, you gave me a first impression I hope. So here, they, are, they were liars before, but they're truthful now. <coughs> but the father doesn't believe him. Because, khalas, because this is the first time you were lying, basically you're lying here. And they say in the Arabic, uh, uh, as well, parable method, they say, you have missed lots of truthful statements that the liar says. You have missed lots of our truthful statements that the liar had said because he's a liar and you always deem him as a liar he must have said lots of truthful statements but because you don't believe him that's why the prophets are to be chosen from what? 
pure background. Never stolen, never fornicated, never stolen, never lied. Before they receive their revelation, before they become prophet, their record is clean. Because if they're not clean, no people will not be believing them. We're going to believe you were a liar before you became a prophet. How could we believe you? You were a thief. How could we believe you? We're not going to trust you. Even if he repents, as I said, still the effect is there. With Allah Azza wa Jal, yes, he repented, but the people, they don't tolerate. Still in the back of their mind. So to earn somebody's trust after you have mistrusted him, <laughs> takes a long time. Still lingers in the back of the mind. Mm. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Because he saw something bad from him. That's the Shutman Masih. Bad effect of the sin. قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا نعم. So then Yaqub said, Maybe Allah will bring them all back to me. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. So he didn't say, عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ Who is بِهِمْ? Yusuf and his brother. Still didn't lose hope. More than 30 years. More than 30 years didn't lose hope. I mean, he's going to be declared dead by any state. 30 years, no, no news of this person. Declared dead, I'll give you a statement that. A, 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 a shahada. A certificate is dead. He died. 30 years, no, 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 no news from him. He's dead, but he's not dead. What Yaqub? Because it's the interpretation of a dream. Is that dream? Yaqub is a dream interpreter. Still has hope. Right. Let's listen to the last word now. So, them here that is Yusuf. Uh, yeah. Go on. And, uh, and he meant Yusuf, Binyamin, and Reuben, the eldest brother who stayed behind. He knows the best how I am suffering um, and the pain of separation that I am experiencing. <coughs> Don't go to just interpretation. And he then turned away from them, and he turned his face away from his son. He left them. And said, "How great is my grief for Yusuf." He's still yearning for Yusuf. His eyes tend to wander. My heart goes for him, and I miss him so much that I'm unable to control myself. He suddenly had his old wounds opened and remembered the old injury with a new one and he <coughs> cried and wept for so long and so much that he lost his sight because of the sorrow that he was suppressing and fell into a silent melancholy. Allah, Father kept crying until he lost his sight. <sighs> so they said, Tallahi. <coughs> Tafta or Tafkur Yusuf? Yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So great was his plan and grief, <coughs> pain. So so great was his pain and grief that he no more had tears in his eyes and he suppressed his feelings of mourning because he could no more mourn. And when his sons saw the suffering of their father, they felt unable to bear it and said, By Allah. قالوا تالله تفتأ تذكر يوسف حتى تكون حرضا أو تكون من الهالكين. By Allah, you will not cease to remember Yusuf until you ruin your health or until you perish. But he replied to them that he was not complaining of anything. قال إنما أشكو بثي وحزني إلى الله وأعلم من الله ما لا تعلمون. He said, I only complain of my sorrow and grief to Allah, and I know. From Allah, what you do not know. <coughs> Allah will open the door of His mercy and soon prove me the, uh, with the relief and release me from my suffering and sorrow. Yusuf had a dream, and the dream has to come true. You and I have to be uh, have to be bowed down before Him. This hasn't yet happened. Yusuf must be somewhere around. He must be alive. So still, the dream. Still there in the mind of Yaqub alayhi salam. He says, وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know from Allah what you don't know. 
the dream. Go on. So Yusuf must be somewhere around, he must be alive, and he must be somewhere <coughs> high in rank. My son, go and... Okay, then he says to them now, encourage them. Ya bani yadhabu fatahassasu mi Yusuf wa aqeed wa la tayasu min rawhillah. إنه لا ييأس من روح الله إلا القوم الكافر. نعم. My son, go and inquire about Yusuf and his brother, and do not give up hope in Allah's mercy. Truly, no one despairs of Allah's mercy except those who have no faith. So go and look for him and his brother, and do not despair of mercy of Allah. He removes hardship, hardship, and brings relief and glad tidings. So off they went again to Egypt. This is another benefit we gain, that number one, Ya'qub did not give up regarding his brothers being fixed, his, sorry, the, the brothers of Yusuf, regarding his sons to be fixed. I mean that still he hopes that his, his sons will be turning into good people. He did not give up and say to them, you are cruel, you just took one son and took another one, it's evil, go away from my face. Still, he didn't give up. Second one, which is more important, the hope of finding Yusuf had renewed by the loss of the second son. SubhanAllah. Did you understand that? You lose another son, and you get, you're supposed to get, give up hope. But that renewed the hope of Yaqub. لا تيأسوا من روحي يا بني يذهبوا فتحسسوا من يوسف واخي So the, the renewal, and I gained this benefit from Shaykh Hussain Habibah Allah in one gathering that we sat, and he just said that, and I was really amazed. This is really a benefit that we gain it from that وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ He lost a son, he did not give up. You lose another son, you give up. But the renewal, the revival of his hope after the losing or the loss of the second son. طيب. Then, he says, فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ قَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الْعَزِيزِ مَسَّنَا وَأَهْلَنَا الضُّرُّ وجئنا ببضاعة مزجاة فأوف لنا الكيل وتصدق علينا إن الله يجز المتصدقين. This is the title is what I'm going to be. Brothers, Brothers tell their misery to Joseph Yusuf عليه السلام. طيب. Subheading. Go to the interpretation straight away. Brothers tell their misery to Yusuf عليه السلام. Now Yusuf's brothers are back in Egypt. They went to see him for their provision. This is the third time. This is how many times? The third, third time. This is the third year. Third time. Now, they went to see him for their provision and to request him to be kind enough to return to them their brother Binyamin. Meaning, they said, Utasaddaqalayna, we got used to you to be what generous, always you given us better than what we hoped for. So give us, and also, they said, give us our brother. That's what they're after. Utasaddaqalayna. So when they came, they met their elder brother and they went to the king and they said to them, what we've got now is little. Just give us. They explained to him their plight and the plight of their father and family and said, O oh minister, harm has afflicted upon us and our family because of famine, hardship and big family. And we have come with merchandise of little worth. It's muzjah. Bidaatin muzjah. Little. Not that much. No. As we have no more good uh, silver coins or money, these are what we brought to barter our provision. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that they brought old useless ropes and seeds of palm and mir. So please. Allahu alam with the authenticity of this interpretation. If it's authentic from Abdullah ibn Abbas, we take it, but we don't know. Now. So please accept from us and grant us our loads. So fill up. Uh, for us the measure and be charitable to us. Surely Allah rewards the charitable. Because we got used to you to be what? Very charitable. Now. When Yusuf saw their hardship and one uh, of their resources, he could no longer hold back his silence. His emotions started flowing wild and he said, <laughs> Did you know what you have done to Yusuf and his brother in your ignorance? They could not hold their surprise and they exclaimed, You are indeed Yusuf. Ah, how did they know? Lots of interpretation here. 
I mean, how? I mean, you've been looking at him all the time, and now, what? What is the thing that changed for them to know that he's Yusuf? The closest to me to the scenario that he spoke to them in the Hebrew, in the language now. Before he was speaking to them what? in the Aziz language, which is in the Egypt, Egyptian. Now, Hebrew. Ah, Yusuf Just those words, in Antum Jahilun, straight away they looked with a different look now. Hang on, he's speaking in our tongue now. <laughs> he looks like us. Ah. Are you Yusuf? Oh, you are Yusuf. <laughs> they got it. That's it. Are you Yusuf? You mean? Yes, you are Yusuf. Are Yusuf? Yes. I'm Yusuf. I am Yusuf. And this is my brother. Come. They think he's a slave, huh? He's like a king. <laughs> he came aside, dressed up properly. Masha Allah. Allah Allah will give us his favors. So he hid he 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 his, his brother, his brother's honored. So, <clears throat> listen, go continue, please. They came to him and met him many times, but nowhere could they have thought of him being Yusuf. They could not believe it to be true, but Yusuf said, Yes, I am Yusuf, and this is my brother. By the way, he said a word, Yusuf said, he said, In antum jahilun, jah ignorance, and the ignorance effect is devastating. Allah mentioned the word jahil always to criticize. When you make the uh, decoration of yourself, like the women when they decorate themselves and beautify themselves, like the beauty of those people who are from the ignorant days. In the hadith of the Prophet he who does imitate the jahiliya, then met and bite on the private part of his father, the punishment of his. So that, that, lots of the word jahili has been mentioned to criticize, and the biggest criticism, it would be the Jahiliya. And that's why Abu Jahl, you know, Abu Jahl, Audhu Billah, may Allah curse him, Abu Jahl, uh, the man of ignorance. What the name? Somebody's calling himself Abu Jahl. Allah Mustafa. Father. I am Yusuf, with whom you did what you did, and when you wronged him, and he is my brother. He subtly reminded them of their jealousy and enmity towards him and his brother and said Allah has been indeed gracious to us. After the hardship with, uh, uh, which you inflicted upon us, it was Allah who provided us with mercy and kindness. That now I am what I am. Surely, he who fears Allah and is patient. Allah does not leave to waste the reward of the doers of good. So they said, قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ آثَرَكَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Continue reading. They came to recognize His excellence over them and that Allah has really chosen Him over, uh, chosen Him for His bounty. And they said, by Allah, Allah has indeed preferred you above us. And so they confessed their wrongs. وَإِنْ كُنَّا لَخَاطِئِينَ even if you were to be wrong. You were wrong all the way from the beginning. So now they are trying to beg for his what? Forgiveness. قَالَ لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمِ Go on. So they confessed their wrongs and sins and said, We have certainly been guilty of sin. But Yusuf had no hard feelings of any revenge. He only reminded them what they did when they were ignorant. So there is no reproach for and the action. So he said, I'm not going to blame. La tathriba alaykum al Wallahi, this is really, subhanAllah. He didn't say, did you remember when you put me in there? Did you remember? Did you remember? He didn't want to rub it, you know, the rub it. To rub the wound. Mm -hmm. Just left it. Khalas. La tathriba alaykum And not only that, Ya Rafiullahu alaykum wa huwa arham wa rahim. If you are sincere in your repentance, go on. So he said, no reproach shall be upon you this day. And Yusuf also sought forgiveness from Allah for them and said, and Allah will forgive you. He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. mercy. <clears throat> and there's a, a way to, to read the Quran, to read this uh, sentence, which is in a wrong way. And that is, قَالَ لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمْ الْيَوْمْ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ That's not correct translation. 
Or what did I do here? I stopped on La Tathriba Alaykum. That Yusuf, he said, there is no blame upon you. Today, Allah will forgive for you. You see the difference now? The first interpretation was, there is no blame upon you today. Allah will forgive for you. The difference here, but the other one says, that's today Allah will forgive you, which is not correct. Now, then he commanded them to go take their shirt. Continue. <clears throat> Yusuf salam, then asked them to go back home to their father with his shirt. Again, the shirt story, remember? Start with the shirt, the missing shirt. Shirt, shirt, shirt. <laughs> the shirt which is being ripped by the wife of Al Aziz. The shirt which is being given by the brother of Yusuf to their father. Huh? This is the shirt now. Give, take my shirt as well. So the story of Yusuf Alayhi Salam in a dream and a shirt. Now. Um, Yusuf Alayhi Salam then asked them to go back home to their father with his shirt and put it on the eyes of his father <coughs> so his sight will come back. This was one of his miracles and proofs of prophethood. Afterwards, they should so bring... So when he said, listen to me, when he said, take my shirt and put it onto my father's eyes and he will gain sight. I mean, no way can he could say that except from revelation. He's not a doctor. Even the doctor would not guarantee such a cure by putting a shirt on somebody's eyes. So he must be a revelation. He's a prophet. So Allah is he, he, the one who is planning all this step by step and Yusuf is going with it. Yusuf could have just exposed himself from the beginning, he could have beaten him up, you remember what I said? But he's going with the plan of Allah. Slowly, slowly. So he gave his shirt, that means Allah revealed to him. He gave his shirt, he said, just put it in the eyes of my father and he will get saved by the permission of Allah. Because he, he didn't say, he said, Yati Basira, he didn't say inshallah. He will come have a, a, an eyesight, khalas. Because Allah will already, he will have his eyesight back. And listen to this, and he, the father, he, he, says that he knows this, that the brother of his from the smell of the body of the, of the boy, of his son. And this is 30 years plus I'm talking about. More, I, I was uh, calculating, more, at least more than 31. Some of them they said 80, some of them said 40. More than 50 years between Yusuf alayhi salam to meet his father. But when I calculate it, it's more than 31 years. So, you know, I, I mean, you, you forget not just the smell, but everything of the person. Forget. So the smell is going to be the same? Subhanallah. طيب. Right. وَلَمَّا فَصَلَتِ الْعِيرِ قَالَ أَبُوهُمْ إِنِّي لَأَجِدُ رِيحَ يُوسُفُ لَوْ لَا أَن تُفَنِّدُ Afterwards, they should bring all of their family to Egypt where they could live a life of comfort. So go with this shirt of mine and cast it over the face of my father and he shall recover his sight. Then bring to me your family all together. Okay, can we stop here inshallah? We'll just make it <laughs> stop here, which is the last thing it is. It's going to be what? Shirt. The dream comes true, okay? That's what we're going to become. The dreams come true inshallah. That's where we're going to start, which is from when I'm a fossil at the year. Um, yeah, we should link to that one, that's the problem. So we'll just keep it good. The last class is going to be, inshallah, for Yusuf alayhi salam is next week. We're going to finish it, and plus on top of that, we're going to give some of the benefits um, that we have uh, gained from this. And by the way, uh, there is a book regarding the benefits of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam in which Sheikh. Muhammad Musa Nasr Rahimahullah um, had made, along with Sheikh Salim al Hilali, that book contains more than a thousand benefits from the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. Now, Father. Any questions? Father. Um, so there were seven years of drought to happen. So when did Yusuf reveal himself? Was that on the third year or fourth year? When did Yusuf reveal himself to as to be third, le third meeting? Third so it must be third year. And when we say third year, based upon that, from the first year of drought they came to him. Did you understand that? Based upon that, they could come from the example, not the first year, they could have come from the second year of drought. We don't know exactly. But we know that there was three meetings. 
first meeting in the first year. What is it, the first year of the drought? That's, we don't know. But the first year from the drought years, which are the seventh. Second year after that, third year, the third meeting, the third year. Wallah, now. Nah. Tawadah. So when, um, when, for example, you're traveling and you combine the Dukhar and the Asr, to do your Adhkar, are you supposed to do the Adhkar uh, after Asr? Are you supposed to do the after Asr or the after Asr time? I'm looking for Yusuf Ali Salam in that question. <laughs> oh, because, uh, well, it's to do with, um, you can say it slightly. Okay, okay, hang on a second. I was waiting, where is going to be fitting Yusuf in that question? Fadal. Yaqub Ali Salam, he read, he cried from grief until his... Um, Yaqub Ali Salam, he cried until he lost his sight. So it is permissible to... No, he did not plan to lose his sight. No. But this, he cried. And his cries from his heart, and uh, Yaqub alayhi salam, he was so attached to his son because he's a prophet as well, son. And Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, if not just his father were willing to cut their fingers, you know, remember the women cut their fingers before seeing him, not the beauty of his face, the beauty of his inside as well. So if that person, other people who are not there related to him, they would rather cut their fingers when they saw him, they forgot. So how about his father? So he must have loved him, him so much. So that, so that I cannot, and you and me or anybody else, to envisage or imagine what type of relationship between Yaqub and his son that made him to cry, such a cry, that made him to lose his body. And, you know, he's not planning for this, but when you are in grief and depression and all of that, you tend to lose weight, and lose, you know, everything. But you're not allowed to to uh, plan this to, in order for you to lose your life. But this is happens. And uh, the Prophet says so in himself, so he was in grief and sorrow after he had lost his uh, uncle, then he lost his wife, and after that, the incidents of a life. Okay, all of this, Allah said to comfort him, because he was in grief and sorrow, gave him the ascension. Lifted him up above the heavens. Ah, Everything has been been before, we removed now. But there was grief and sorrow. And everybody got grief and sorrow. <coughs> everybody. So depending upon how close is the person from you. So Yaqub, he must have been very close. And he's still Now. So if someone says in a derogative manner, accept the Qadr and... I mean, accept the Qadr, but doesn't mean that you don't cry. Accepting the Qadr, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to cry. This is what happened to Ibrahim when he died, the son of Muhammad says. Yes. So when the Prophet of Allah started crying and he started even smelling him. Some of the companions said, Messenger, what is this? They were amazed, crying. Because the Arabs, they don't cry that much. Remember that person he saw Prophet وسلم, kissing Al Hassan and said, I've got 10 kids. I've never kissed any of them. I've got 10 kids. I've never kissed any one of them. He said, Well, I got no. Uh, I can't do anything if Allah had pulled them, plugged out their mercy out of your heart. I can't do anything to you. So when the Prophet was asked, What is this? He said, This is a mercy. Allah puts it in the hearts of the people. So accepting the Qadr, it doesn't mean that you can't cry. No, cry. I would say even to you, cry. So you could really, because the cry is what? Yes. Relieves yourself. If you don't cry, you might explode. I'm going to hold my teeth because it's Qadr of Allah. That's correct. Qadr of Allah is not to object on this thing. Why, my son? Why? That's, or you start striking your cheek, pulling your head, tearing off your clothes, shaving your beard and you're shaving your head and all of that. Which is the jahli used to do that. That's not allowed. But as in the cry, you cry. You cry. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cried. Now. Any other questions? Every time we remember things as well, that moments in our life, cry. True? Yes. Father. Could you kindly explain the difference of the Wordings in, in the custom on the levels, Bilbar and 
There is no difference in the qasam. Billahi wa tallahi wa wallah. All of it, letters of, we call it, ta'kid. Emphasis of it. Okay? Emphasis of the oath. Okay? So, wallahi wa billahi wa tallahi. And he, as well, I don't want people to start using this as as in, because some of them they use it like a they show that they are eloquent speakers. This is not eloquent speakers. It tells me that this person is still an amateur. <laughs> so I say, Wallahi wa billahi wa tallahi. Who do you think you are, king of the world or something? <laughs> no, and the person who says like this, I think that he's an immature. Okay, it's immaturity. Now. <clears throat> As Allah yati bihim, bihim could be for two, could be for three, even bihima, bihim as well. So uh, uh, bihim jamia, is it to do with Yusuf and his brother, the two brothers of his, which is the elder and the younger? But it's the focus is on the two, because the third one is not lost. He's not been taken. He's, he's, his, 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 not, his fate is there. He said, I'm going to stay there waiting. Okay? For the rule of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the third one is not basically, um, uh, uh, it's not something that Yaqub would fear for him. So Bihim is focused upon Yusuf. Even you could use for, as Bihim, as Yusuf, even for one person, Yusuf for two. But in the interpretation, this Bihim means as well, Robin, some, some of the interpretations, just Yusuf and. Good question. Any questions? Taib subhanakallah bihamdik. Ashadu alayla ta staffil. But it's very good to start early and finish early.